Hello, welcome. I thought we'd have a look at quite an old locomotive, but um, it's fairly new to me, and it is a Backman Class 37. Um, these are sort of strange packaging that they did in those days. Uh, but actually, completely the wrong photograph on the front. This is um, Transrail Livery. So let me just show you the end of the box. Hopefully it's not... Uh, you can see it there. So this is a Backman branch line 32-375DC. So this was originally DCC fitted um, and analog compatible. Uh, this one has actually been upgraded and we got TTS sound fitted. And I purchased this because I, I cannot remember what the TTS sounds used to sound like, how good they were in the, in, back in the day. And I thought, I don't have this because I like to use the TTS sound chip and see if I can fit it into an N-gauge um, locomotive. And obviously, as you're probably aware if you try to look for them, TTS sound chips are very rare to find now. Um, and I've, I've found found this on eBay over the, the, um, the previous weekend to the bank holiday so, <clears throat> so so a weekend ago and I got it for let me just double check because um, uh, I it was at quite a, a reasonable price so this one was a bid of 104 with four pound postage, so 108 all in. And it seemed a really good bargain, I thought. Um, I've not taken it out of the box yet though, to actually look to see if it is the bargain that I think it is, or it even all works. So let me take it out of the box for the first time. Like I say, you get this uh, strange image on the front of these. So we've actually got some details with this. So this comes with the Class 37, a complete breakdown of all the parts. And what do we have here? So this is DCC on board locomotive. So it gives you all the information on setting the speed, settings, and a table of the CV values. But, because it doesn't have the Backman PCC chip, that's not really useful now. Now, does it have any of the sound information? It's got a Backman Branchline Farish customer guarantee. Very well out of date. And a collector's club. Which, uh, Nobody ever fills in. So, let's have a look. And we've got accessory pack. Seller did say that was there, unopened. So that is all completely unopened. Comes with the snow plows, all the pipes. There must be some information on the instruction where to fit those. Is it? Eight pin DCC um, blanking plate. Now let's get the loco out. Now I really don't like these polystyrene boxes that they that they used to put them in because it's very tight fit and damage is easily done to the like about the horns, maybe the aerials. Okay, so this all looks nice. All in a nice condition. Horns are all still intact on the top. The same with all the aerials. Driver included. But not a driver's mate, you know, so Obviously, for just depot duties, then um, on a real uh, 
run out you would need to but yes very uh, very nice looking livery as well it's not really one of the eras that I sort of look at it, uh, it seems to yeah we do have sprung buffers it does seem to be a very nice applied just at the eye um, I'm going to have a proper close-up look under the uh, on a, a white background um, at, uh, uh, so I, I think the next uh, let's just have a look underneath that's just so we can see the DCC on board um, it's quite a bit of oil actually on on the bogey there I can you know, see so I think the, the seller has sort of lubricated it but um, a little bit too much so I'm going to get a cloth and just wipe some of that off and get uh, some cotton buds just trying to remove a little bit of that before we put it on the layout yeah so I'm never actually disappointed in these Batman models even the older ones sort of dating back sort of thing it's just a where's this tooling 2006 tooling it says this one was and to be honest okay it's not got all the fancy pieces of the latest ones but if you want to pay two three hundred pounds for a sound you know dcc fitted or a sound loco then you're going to get the latest model but for a hundred pounds it's like this is a very good quality at this sort of age As you can see the decoration is really nice. Some nice fine printing. And as you can see all the all the buffers are nice and sprung on here still. So I don't believe this has actually been used that much. So let's have a, a look on the opposite side. There's some nice detail added. So, let's see if we can see inside the cab there. So you can just see the driver. Obviously, it would look more prototypical with the uh, all the pipework fitted to the front and all the buffer beam accessories. But we do have some detail on the fuel tanks, nicely printed, and we do have a fan, and as you can see the uh, horns are in place. Yeah, looks very nice. So, although looking good is only one thing, it's like, the, does it run? And does it run well? That is the main thing, and that is what we buy these models for, not just to look at. Before we have a look on the layout, we'll just see what the weight is. Five hundred and seventy-six point nine. Very heavy loco. Now I've just set the DCC address back to uh, number three for default, as I couldn't find any information what the DCC address was set from the uh, seller. So we do have lights let's put those on 
know what direction I'm going then. I'm actually just using um, the Backman Dynamis. Um, it's not the best DC controller as it's sort of wireless and uh, if you lose sight of the uh, base unit you lose complete, complete control you know and it just shuts the, everything off so but it is the only DC controller I've got I know there's a lot better ones out there so so let's just see does it I'm going to go backwards first That runs very nice and uh, slow. I wonder what it will run out over the points like. I'm not sure what speed steps we are on. Let's come back. Nice to have DCC. Oops. I'm there. Hit the buffer stops. This is where you do want a very slow controlled locomotives on a small layout like this. So let's get into the centre of the frame and then let's have a listen to the sounds. Because that's one of the main reasons I purchased this model. Okay, one to start. Okay, so the sounds all work. It seems to be very loud, so I might need to adjust the volume. Okay, let's see how it goes through the Pico second radius points. I have three set track points and three streamline points on this layout due to the space. So. See how well it navigates these. Um, two of these were second hand. One on the um, one it's going over now, and one on the fill yard. I should have purchased all new ones really for this layout, but 
I've got them all fitted. They do seem to all work, but uh, I think it would have been better to have had new. So there is a very slight bump on that point. acceleration there. I wasn't looking at the controller and just did it up way too high. Seems to get a little bit jerky at one set of speed. Let's see. So that's sort of its crawl, and then you get to seems to be okay. That's the sort of speed that you would be expecting to be using it on the layout like this. Okay, I seem to be very happy with this loco. May even keep the sound in it, you know. Um, Yes, I think that's a, a really nice one for my collection as well. Something to run on the layout um, and something to run on a new layout when I come to build that one. So, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you enjoyed and I uh, will see you on the next video.